Hi there, Danny here and the Sick Biker Studio being rebuilt. More on that just in a couple of days, but today we have finally got another episode of Your Bikes on my channel series. Today, Christian is regards to you, man, and thanks for the upload, uh, is going to show us his affordable carbon hardtail. And the most interesting part, at least for myself for, from his uh, video is why 27.5 inch wheels on the mountain bike can be a very, very good choice. So let's see his video and remember you can all be featuring your bikes on my channel. I do invite you all to, to do, do that. All the info in the description and let's see the video of Christianis. Hello everyone, my name is Christianis and this is my affordable carbon fiber hardtail. So I bought the bike for about 1300 euros on evancycles.com. Uh, this is a 2016 model. I think I got a really good, really nice deal. And uh, the only things that have gone wrong so far are bearings in the bottom bracket after a mud muddy uh, cross-country race. Uh, one of the bearings uh, was done, <laughs> you know, got some mud and got some moisture and uh, also bearings in the XT rear derailleur, derailleur uh, one of the pulley wheels was uh, stuck solid and I had to clean out the bearings and the grease and uh, What else? Oh the chain snapped um, But you know, I, I think it was my fault because I was uh, uh, s Shifting the front gear while while the while I was applying power so that was my fault and uh, also the bearings on the headset after many times of washing and uh, mud and so on but uh, I think you can expect the bearings to fail uh, these are things that just do fail and uh, these are wear items and you cannot expect them to last forever uh, why did I buy a 27.5 instead of 29er? Um, first of all the bike that I was riding before this is a 26er full suspension so I didn't want to jump from uh, 26 to 29 uh, I wanted to try out this 27.5 size and also I'm lightweight uh, below 70 kilograms so um, and I like to ride up hills a lot that's the, that's the only thing that I like and that I can do um, so for me there's really no real justification for a larger heavier wheel size I'm not uh, very athletically gifted I cannot uh, really expect to get good results in races so the the, the rolling uh, uh, the better rolling uh, characteristics of the 29ers may give me some advantage on cross country but uh, the difference would be tiny and I rather have a lighter bike that I can enjoy more when I'm climbing uh, very steep, steep inclines. And uh, by the way, don't you agree that 20 cent point five wheels just look cooler? Bike looks really, really nice. And at first, I didn't, I wasn't sure sure about the paint scheme because it's kind of weird. It's blue and green, but uh, after a while, it grew on me. And I really don't choose my bike based on paint scheme. Uh, rather, I do choose it based on looks, but the paint schemes are usually okay. And I also found uh, matching uh, color cycling shoes, so really like it. One thing I should note is that uh, it's a matte matte finish, so it's not easy to wash it. But uh, you don't you don't really want to wash it as often as a result, and. Uh, Aesthetically, it re I really like the bike. It's really, really sweet looking bike. And as Sigbecker said in one of his videos, uh, it really matters if we like the bike that we ride, uh, like how it looks. It really does matter, almost as much as performance. So, the frame, it's a really good frame. And it's really the, the main reason why we would buy this bike. Uh, it is the layup is called HMF. Scott also offer HMX, but you'd get that only on the very expensive RC models. And for the 20 
Niner, uh, you get for some reason non standard extra wide seat post, uh, which obviously will not do anything good for the ride comfort, but for the 700 series, you get standard diameter seat post. In the rear, you don't get a very wide axle, uh, the wide two axle, uh, but uh, it's not a quick release either. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about really when it comes to these axles, but it's not as wide as uh, like on the Fox Fork and uh, like you get on the newest uh, Scots. But really, there is nothing to complain about the frame. It is strong. Not only is it stiff and uh, not only is the geometry race oriented, but it's also strong and it will last and uh, there are no scratches or chips or anything, any uh, wear related damage on it even after all these hundreds of kilometers of quite hard use. So I'm super happy about the frame. Uh, one of the upsides or the pluses or the good parts about this bike is that it has a decent fork. Uh, it's uh, Fox 32 performance, it's not the Elite. Uh, it doesn't have uh, very fancy adjustment options. It has uh, rebound and uh, obviously you can adjust the air pressure. And uh, it has Fox uh, Fit4 damper, dampening system. And uh, this fork has generally received positive reviews. And uh, I'm not really an expert on uh, mountain bike suspensions. I don't use mountain bikes on a very rough uh, terrain. Uh, don't do any jumps, don't do many rock gardens or anything like that. I don't ride technical terrain because I, I don't have any skills. So I cannot comment about uh, the, the suspension. But it is very decent. It's obviously air fork. Uh, I think this lower part is maybe magnesium, I'm not sure. Uh, the stanchions are obviously uh, aluminum. Uh, some somebody who is more into uh, suspension might say that it's like Sigbiker has uh, already reviewed the Fox forks and he said that uh, they are not very stiff. <sighs> yeah, maybe when I'm braking uh, on the front, uh, I can feel it flexing a little bit, but that doesn't bother me too much because I'm like 60, 67, 68 kilograms anyway, so. Uh, the flexing is not not such a big deal for me personally if you're heavier it might be a problem but uh, in this price range you cannot ask for a better fork uh, and, and even in uh, the 2018 model range for Scott scales uh, you get these Fox ridden uh, forks I don't know how stiff or not stiff they are but uh, in terms of the dampening system they have a cheaper more simple system they don't have the fit for damper anymore so actually in 2016 uh, you got better forks for your money the crankset is uh, quite simple uh, quite basic it's Diori uh, in terms of construction and design it's identical to the XT uh, not the, the latest XT but uh, the equivalent generation of XT and uh, it is stiff, it has a uh, Holotech 2 uh, design, two-piece design and uh, really no complaints about it uh, apart from the fact that uh, this paint is not very strong uh, and I already scraped it off like uh, on the uh, first ride almost uh, yeah, I was using non-clipping pedals, maybe that's why maybe my uh, shoes were moving around a bit too much but uh, yeah this black paint is not very durable uh, keep in mind uh, the only thing about the crankset that I don't like is uh, the gear ratios this is a 36 22 and uh, the 22 is almost useless how often would you use it I, I, I hardly ever switch to the small ring practically never so uh, actually in the spec sheet uh, on evanscycles.com uh, they list this bike uh, as to have uh, uh, 38 24 teeth uh, crankset but for some reason I got the 36 22 which is supposed to be uh, uh, packaged with the 29 inch uh, 
Scott scale. So I have the small wheels, I have the small sprockets, and uh, uh, you know, I, I, I don't have much top end. Uh, you know, at 36 by 11 and 27.5, uh, I cannot uh, really participate in uh, any kind of uh, tarmac races uh, or fast racing in a group uh, because I spin out. I, I don't, I don't have very good pedaling technique either. So. Uh, this is a Diori cassette, 1136, uh, XT 10-speed uh, uh, rear derailleur, derailleur. Uh, it doesn't have a clutch and uh, it's not a big deal obviously because this is a 2 by system but if you are going to convert it to one by, uh, that might be a little bit worrisome but there is still quite a bit of tension here so I'm not sure if you even need the clutch and uh, at least in theory if you have a clutch uh, and, and too much tension here uh, it may, may reduce efficiency <laughs> a little bit so yeah the derailleur works really good uh, no complaints apart from uh, chain suck actually this happened uh, several times when when I was shifting on the smallest cog here on the 11 uh, the chain slipped off and uh, damaged the, the frame a little bit I will show in more detail but uh, I'm not sure what had happened uh, and it happened several times the only part that I don't really like about this bike are the brakes they are hydraulic brakes Shimano they are the cheapest hydraulic brakes that you can get from Shimano and the cheapest brake discs that you can get and the problem with them is that I don't really like the power. I don't really feel like they have enough power. I, on my previous bike that I still have and ride from time to time, um, it had mechanical disc brakes, avid mechanical disc brakes. Suppose not the most expensive ones, but uh, maybe not the cheapest ones. And those, I can feel they have much more power. Uh, I don't have to apply as much force on the levers to get really nice bite in terms of braking but uh, these brakes uh, with resin pads uh, and these discs only can accept resin pads they don't feel very powerful and uh, also these pads were really fast so I will be almost certainly upgrading these uh, rotors first pads to some other compound that maybe will give me more power and uh, if that doesn't solve it then I will eventually swap out the brakes and, and the support the, the, like the calipers and uh, and the pistons and everything to most likely to XT group the post and the saddle are both uh, Synchros branded so it's uh, the Synchros is the Scott Synchros brand uh, which means these are not high-end parts and usually with the budget hardtail budget uh, carbon hardtail you're not getting a carbon post or a high-end seat but uh, my experience with the seat has been very pleasant uh, no saddle discomfort even after uh, in longer rides and uh, the post you can easily upgrade without much headache anyway so really happy with the saddle the best saddle I have ever had on a, a mountain bike the shifters are Dioris and the brakes are I'm not really sure what they are I think they're the cheapest hydraulic Shimano's that you can get and uh, here you have a remote lockout switch uh, which is really nice it's all metal uh, feels really solid uh, really premium I suppose it's the same part that you would get on the Scott scale RC World Cup and and and, and these little specific parts you can really uh, see the quality that you get when you buy a brand like Scott the bar and the stem are both synchros. It's uh, aluminum bar and aluminum stem. What you don't get, you don't get fancy wheels. And these are Alex Rims X21, uh, branded with synchros. I'm not sure if Alex Rims is like a legit wheel company or is it part of synchros and therefore part of Scott. But the bottom line is that these wheels are not very expensive. They are not very, re really lightweight. Uh, there's nothing fancy about them but at least 
they are decent and you don't have to worry about uh, damaging them you can trash them as hard as you like so am I satisfied with my purchase yes absolutely would I recommend it to others for sure other than the brakes uh, and the bottom bracket that really likes to fail on me and the gear ratio uh, there is nothing I can complain about about this bike probably the best 1300 euros I've spent in a while and I'm not sure if uh, you're gonna get so much value for money in the future in 2018 because everything seems to be uh, get, getting uh, uh, more expensive and oftentimes you don't get more for the money and let's see what upgrades I buy for the bike because at the moment it's completely stock as it came from Evan Cycles but it is really begging for some cool upgrades and like I said it's a great platform for uh, if you want to buy a bike and keep it for a long time uh, an upgrade and uh, it will be fun next year thanks for watching